I guess I'm done with the saws for a while. Uh, didn't work out quite the way I expected. I cleaned up this little battery operated still from my wife's and sharpened the chain, put some bar oil in it so it's all ready to go. I was going to work on this 180 and see if I get it running. Wound up ordering parts for it. I thought I was going to replace the chain on my Husqvarna 372. Once I got to looking at it, it still has too much life in it to uh, quit. It's pretty well worn, but it's, it's too much life in it to quit. It'll still cut fine. So I sharpened the chain on it and gassed and oiled it up. Oh, it's ready to go. So we get ready to go out and um, start cutting trees down. Well, one of the things I, I want to do before I go out there is to replace the cocks on my cork boots corks on my cock boots. Um, these are my rubber ones here. I'm wearing a pair that's made on Merrill hiking boots that I wear most of the time but these I wear when it's wet and stuff out. And I've mostly been wearing those out in the snow on the ice and stuff and the roads that we go on and stuff are rocky so these corks are pretty well wore out on there. So before I go out and start walking on logs I need to replace those corks. So I've got a tool, basically this is pretty much like golf spikes, something like that. So I've got a tool here, a spanner, that uh, fits in a couple of holes in those things and hopefully they'll spin out of there without spinning the socket out. Okay, just like that. That one's out of there. Might clean that socket out a little bit. It looks like it had some rubber in it or something. Got a couple of kittens here. They're exploring around. They've let them outside now for a while. They're just having a ball. Hopefully they're, they're, they'll be hunters because we I've had a little trouble with mice and squirrels around here getting into stuff. I don't mind the animals too much. Except they get in and uh, the mice get in and tear everything up and pee on all my tools and stuff and then they, uh, uh, when they do it just causes them to not only stink but it causes them to rust real bad. So hopefully the cats around here will help solve that problem. So all these corks here on the heel are pretty much wore out of course. Um, I'll take these all out at once and put the new ones in as these things are sharp and they tear your hand up when you go trying to fool with them. I don't remember where I got these whether I think I got them at Madsen's Lumber down in I don't know whether that's Centralia or Chehalis Washington but I can't remember whether I got these there or whether I got them at Woods Logging Supply in Longview Washington. I uh, always like to stop at both those places when I go down south, see what they got, and sometimes I'll find something I can't live without. That's where I bought uh, the Husqvarna chainsaw and some other things that we wind up buying, pants and gloves and stuff like that. I think I'm going to replace all these on the heel. I'm not going to replace these ones in here on the uh, instep, but I'll replace these ones out here. You can see where the ones get worn. And this is what the boot is here. Just a regular rubber boot. This is a Viking rubber lace-up rubber boot. And they've ground the sole down on it and glued on a new hard sole um, that they put those sockets in for these uh, cleats. And you can get longer spikes for them uh, down in the redwood country in the places where they have trees that have really thick bark on them. They use uh, longer spikes. Actually, uh, my my old leather cork boots, um, they're they're different. They don't have this kind of spike in them. They're uh, they have a regular cork in them, and you can't change those. But you get different ones depending on what kind of wood you're in. And when you're in a country that has the bark is fairly thin, and you go into the wood fairly quick, you use shorter spikes. And when you're a country, like down in the redwoods, or I don't know whether they use those in the 
dug fir or not, some of that dug fir, uh, the old growth dug fir has really thick bark too. But Well here's a new spike and that just threads in just like that. There we go. Now that'll dig into the ice and into the bark and stuff and so right now these are knocked off so much they uh, they help out here on the ice but they're not perfect when you get the spike on them like that then they dig into the ice real good and they dig into the trees real good so getting these ready to go out and cut some trees down and uh, it's snow and ice on the grounds all right i'm going to go ahead and keep working on these and get those spikes in there and then we'll be able to use them here and maybe tomorrow or maybe the next day i don't know well there's one boot recorked you could tell which ones needed it and where the most of the wear and tear on the boots are at the front here. I didn't replace these ones here on the arch as they're they're not sharp but they're they're plenty sharp enough to stick in the wood and of course because they're not worn you know that they don't get used so much but some of these ones out here were right down to nubs. So now here's the there's the difference between an old one and a new one. See those are worn off pretty good. They're, they're like hobnails instead of spikes. So that should help a lot with uh, walking out in the woods. Now I've used those for, well of course out here on the ice, but for hunting and stuff like that, for walking in the woods, uh, a pair of cork boots really makes a big difference when you get out. Uh, if you're not in rocky uh, ground, uh, if you're in the woods, they make a big difference on being able to get around. The only problem with them is, is they stick, and sometimes when you rotate, when you twist or something, it, they put a lot of pressure on your knees, but uh, they sure help walking and slipping and stuff like that when you get on a log or on a branch, or if you're stepping over the ground and there's a slick branch underneath the duff or something like that, these will dig in, and they make a big difference on getting around. Well, my dad went to work in the logging camps and the CC camps, Three C's camps, Civilian Conservation Corps camps, when he was 16 years old. And uh, he left home and started working out in the camps. And uh, he didn't tell me this story. I got this story from somebody else when, uh, that was there, I guess, uh, when he was young. And I used to, well, I used to be around those guys all the time from the time I was a uh, a young boy old enough to walk until I was out at working on my own. I was around guys that were working and a lot of them were older guys that worked with my dad. Like I said, he didn't tell that story. Somebody else did, but apparently he was in a logging camp. I don't know what he was doing, but he was just a, a young, small guy. He was a practical joker. And there was this one guy in the camp that was just a big bully, just a big mean bully. He, he was the biggest guy around, toughest guy around. He was always picking fights, always beating everybody up. Uh, I don't think he ever lost a fight. Like I said, my dad was a, a prankster and uh, he pulled a prank or pl practical joke. And I don't know whether it was aimed at this fella or whether this fella got into it accidentally, whether he was unintentional that he got the the butt of the practical joke but he got mad and started chasing my dad around in the bunkhouse or in the cookhouse I don't know which but anyway he chased him around and like I said dad was a, just a little guy and uh, he went down underneath the table and the guy went down underneath after him crawling after him and dad got him pinned down there under the table and grabbed somebody's cork boot and just started wailing the hell out of the guy's head and I guess did a number on him. It's the first time the guy had ever been beat. And so my old man was a hero in the logging camps after that. But he was a scrapper too. He was somebody that nobody fooled with, even though he was only about 5'9 uh, and, and 145, 50 pounds soaking wet. Uh, there wasn't anybody that wanted to tangle with him. But he got a pretty good reputation after beating that guy with his cork boot. And I guess the guy had, they had to ship him out of there. He, was, he didn't kill him, but he. <laughs> Banged him up pretty good. So, anyway, there's one cork boot that's uh, recorked and uh, ready to go. And I just heard the dinner bell, so I'm going to go in and have a bite to eat. And then I'll come back out and do this one. Oh, this one needs to be redone too. The heels, you know, back here. I can just hear my dad tell me, pick your feet up. Don't scuff your shoes. Don't scuff your shoes. Pick your feet up. Walk easier so you don't wear them out. 
Oh, anyway. <laughs> so, well, done with those. Uh, that's that's cork boots, rubber cork boots, anyway. There we go. One pair of rubber boots, freshly recorked, ready to go to work. Some wicked looking boots, boy. So, I just uh, went out there tonight. I've got trees marked out in the woods uh, out on one of the logging roads to cut to uh, make timbers for the warehouse that we're building or we're planning on building. The Forest Service has given me the permit for it so I can go cut those anytime. We just went out there tonight to take the dogs out for a drive. And there's about a foot of snow on the road, but I, it was passable. I made it out there, so. I'm going to decide tomorrow whether I'm going to go out there and start cutting some of those trees down or not. But the saw is ready and my cork boots are ready and uh, well, I'm probably not going to get any readier. I'm not getting any younger. We'll try those out tomorrow maybe.